Hello everyone, we're back again with another video. I wanted to talk to you about something that I think is incredibly important for people to understand here. It's something that bugged me quite a while back, but I've learned that it's probably for the best that I not keep this stuff to myself and I share it on my channel. It's something that I haven't explicitly touched on on my channel as much as I think I should. A lot of times if I'm saying something in a critique video and it's in passing in the heat of the moment, it's not as adhered to. It doesn't stick as well as if I just made a video exclusively about that. So let's just jump right into this. I was reading a book recently and and at the beginning of the book, basically it was talking about how much better we have it today than we used to, even a hundred years ago, in the United States at least, but also across the world. It applies all across the world. And there were a lot of examples they gave, but the way in which they were conveying it was through some statistics. I'll actually touch on two of them. One of the statistics was that 10% of infants in some decade in the 1900s in the United States, I wish that I could remember the exact decade, but it really doesn't matter actually in terms of what I'm going to talk about. 10% of infants died before reaching one year of age. Okay. That's a fact. It was also stated in there that one in 100 mothers died during childbirth back then in the same decade. So childbirth and child rearing was much more difficult back then than it is today with modern technology and all that good stuff that we have today. And th those statistics, that's totally fine, right? Except I lied. I lied. That is not how it was described in the book. Those are the actual statistics. But the way they conveyed them was in a way that may seem identical and congruous with the truth, but it's not at all. They said that infants had a 10% chance of dying before reaching one year of age. They also said that mothers had a 1%, 1 in 100 chance of dying during childbirth. Okay. That is false. You cannot say that. Now, before I even get into why, the reason I'm covering this is because this is seen all throughout nutritional reporting when it comes to human nutrition science reporting. You see this all the time. A new epidemiological study comes out and it says you have a 23% chance of blank or developing blank if you eat this food. Where'd you get that from? Because that's not what the study showed. And there's multiple reasons why it doesn't show that. And there's multiple reasons why that's irresponsible reporting. But one of them is what I'm about to talk about right now. You all know how much I hate the word risk because it is irresponsible to be using in the reporting of statistics. It is a cause and effect word. However, I'm going to sin a little bit here. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to use the word to get a point across. So hopefully you can look past it. Population risk does not represent individual risk. Okay, that is why this is inappropriate reporting. If there is a 23% increased incidence rate in an intervention group as compared to a control group, that does not mean that the people in the intervention group all had a 23% increased risk. Again, look past it because that's still not even appropriate to be using, but that doesn't mean they had a 23% increased risk of exhibiting that outcome and presenting with that outcome. That's not true because what if someone else had, I don't know, an 11.5% risk and the other person had a 46% risk? Well, you take the mean of that, the average, and it's a 23% percent risk. So the population in this example would be N of two, right? Two people. Well, it was a 23% increased incidence rate. That didn't mean that those people had a 23% increased risk. They had different risk. Individual risk is not compatible with the population risk, but I'm saying it because when you look at this reporting, I want you to have more tools under your belt to contend with the reporting. You cannot say that. Well, white people have a 23% increased chance of this. No, there was a 23% increased incidence rate in a group that had primarily white people or exclusively white people in it of blank heart health outcome. Okay, this stuff really bothers me. The difference between saying one in 100 mothers died during childbirth in the 1900s versus mothers had a 1% chance of dying in childbirth in the 1900s may seem benign, but it's not. Those put two different images in your head. So remember this the next time you see silly reporting about anything, actually, even if it's not health related, if it's politically related, that's important too. Just always remember it so that you don't get preyed upon by this reporting. It's more sensational to put it the wrong way. So anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one, which will probably be another monologue or it'll be me covering a paper or it'll be, I don't know, ripping into someone online that thinks themselves remotely competent to interpret statistics, maybe. So catch you then.